incomparable Carol Rogers and the Bruise Brothers. Well, now we turn to that meditation meditative portion of our uh, gathering tonight in which we intentionally uh, center ourselves in uh, reaching out to the Holy Spirit and more importantly, opening ourselves so that the Spirit may reach in. This evening, uh, we're going to experience a, a form of meditation that is really meant uh, less to find insights in the moment as it is to open you up to insight uh, during your week. Doesn't mean that nothing, <laughs> the Spirit can't jump in and get it word edgewise tonight. Uh, but we invite you to participate with us as a way of uh, actually beginning uh, your search for something uh, rather than concluding it in our time tonight. So let's begin as we always do uh, with a, a hearing our scripture. We're going to listen to a smaller portion that you heard at the beginning of the program. We'll be looking at John chapter 20 verses 10 through 16 after the disciples leave the tomb and Mary remains. Listen for uh, any word or phrase that sticks in your mind uh, after the, the reading is concluded. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. What is that word or phrase that sticks in your mind? Now for the next 10 minutes, I invite you to uh, experience some silence and some guidance along the way. If you want to close your eyes or bring them into soft focus or simply focus them on something that, where your attention will not be distracted, let us seek the Spirit's presence. So we pray, God, Spirit of the living Christ, we come into your presence we ask for your presence. We ask for your guidance. And more than we even ask that your presence be with us, for we know it always is, we ask that you help us be present to you. As we take a deep breath in, we let it out slowly, clearing away whatever obstacles we may have within us to your presence. I invite you to take that phrase that you identified or that word from the reading and simply let it circle around in your consciousness for a moment, a few moments, looking for the ways it, the different ways it touches your life.
Now we'll step into the experience of the passage that we just heard in our meditation. Easter Sunday began not with joy and celebration, but in the garden of despair, where the angels asked Mary, woman, why are you weeping? I invite you to take the next couple of minutes and find something that you are weeping about in your life right now. Something very specific and something that you have not been able to find a resolution to. Something you suspect strongly you can't find a resolution to without help from beyond yourself sort through perhaps many reasons for weeping and find that one. When you found that one thing that for which you weep, over which you weep, I invite you now to spend the next few minutes turning that over to the Spirit, stating within yourself, I cannot do this without your help. I surrender this entirely into your hands. For without your help, I have no hope. Without your help, I have no hope in solving this. Find that within yourself that truly means these very things. Put your pain in conversation with God in a way that lets God direct that, not you.
once you've been honestly be able to turn that over to the Spirit. Remember, recall that pneuma phrase or word. Is there any conversation to be had between that phrase and what you've just turned over? Spirit of the living God, we don't expect that you would magically solve that which we've brought before you this evening. But we do trust that you desire to guide us. Help us as we move forward from this night to look and listen to the many ways that you will come to us, expecting and if not an answer or an ultimate resolution, the next step forward. And for the time being, recognizing a faith that is truly formed in the aftermath of Easter, we thank you for being one who calls us by name being one who we recognize when we hear our name spoken most deeply. And we call you by name our joy, our love, our hope, our Lord, our God. And to you now we give thanks. We offer our thanksgiving. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. That uh, phrase that stuck in my mind tonight was uh, the part where uh, it just simply notes that Mary, you saw Jesus, but you didn't rec recognize uh, who he was. And as I turned that within me, I was realizing that oftentimes uh, those responses from the Spirit are right before our very eyes, and yet we, we, we don't see that. And sometimes it's a matter of paying attention and even having that expectation that the Spirit does want to answer us.
so that we're actually paying attention a bit more closely uh, because oftentimes we, in our, we get wrapped up in our business if we're not expecting a response, then we're not even looking. We're not even paying attention. I'm reminded that, that in so many of the gospel accounts of the, the post-resurrection Jesus, he appears in forms uh, where people don't recognize him. Mary mistakes him for a gardener. Uh, a little while later in the, in the Gospel of John, the disciples see him wandering by this, uh, cooking breakfast at the Sea of Galilee, and they don't recognize him until he calls their names. Or in Luke's Gospel, I'm reminded of the, the two uh, disciples, uh, not part of the twelve, but who were wandering, uh, walking to Emmaus, and Jesus pulls up right beside them and asking them, why are they so down in the dumps? And they're talking about how the Messiah had, was, had you would thought the Messiah had come, but then their hopes had been dashed and so forth. They invite him when it looks like uh, they're going to turn off to Emmaus and he's going to walk further on the other direction. They say, hey, come to our house. Let's have, uh, you know, yeah, I can, we can lodge you tonight. And he comes and, and then <clears throat> during that meal, Jesus, who had been unrecognized, breaks bread, uh, breaks bread. And then they see who has been with them the whole time. And then he disappears, and we've been trying to wrap our minds around that uh, forever. Again, I think sometimes Jesus is goofing with us. Uh, but the, the, but the, the deep kind of recurring motif here is oftentimes in table fellowship with other people, uh, oftentimes when we are deeply aware of those, those questions, those hurts, those reasons why we are weeping as well. Uh, that sometimes that answer has been walking with us for a long time. And sometimes it just takes a moment, which uh, just a turn of a phrase or a, a shift of a, of a view, just ever so slightly, and suddenly, oh, oh, of course. You know, why didn't I recognize this before? So often this is the way the Spirit comes to us. On this meal, which we invite you to share with us tonight, we remember a night of betrayal and desertion, not simply resurrection, but before. A night of betrayal and desertion, which Jesus took bread and said, My friends, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. So likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we remember Christ's life and ministry among us as a mortal human being. We also celebrate Christ's resurrection, living into his fullest and truest identity as the spirit of the living Christ, whom we have come to know in Christian tradition as the Holy Spirit. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we take both the earthly ministry of Jesus and that divine spiritual ministry of the Holy Spirit deeply within ourselves, turning ourselves over to the Spirit's guidance, trusting that just as bread and wine have entered our own bodies, so is the Spirit dwelling within us. And sometimes all it takes is a blink of an eye, a shift of a gaze, a turn of a phrase, and we see that the Spirit has been there all along, waiting watching, offering guidance, waiting for us to pay attention. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, the bread of life, the cup of blessing.
Well, we're glad you could join us this evening at Darkwood Brew and wish you uh, a happy Easter on this, uh, this particular Sunday. He is risen. Oh my gosh, that's better. That's more instantaneous than any reaction I got all day in the morning services. <laughs> uh, next week, uh, we, we invite you back to join us for a grand finale celebration of 72 weeks of, of the By This Way of Life Master uh, mm -hmm. series. We will be joined by from guests uh, from literally Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon who will be joining us to reflect on some of the significance of this series for their own lives, some of those aha moments and aha actions the series brought them into. So uh, join us next week for more Darkwood Brew. Until then, my friends, may the spirit of the living God made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ our Lord go before you to show you the way, go above you to watch over you, go behind you to push you into places you may not necessarily go yourself, including to the opening of an empty tomb. Go beneath you to uphold you and uplift you. Go beside you to be your strong companion and dwell within you to remind you that you are surely not alone. You are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you and within you now and always. Amen.